Hi guys, Mr. Offwaffles here. The Darkest Chores Easter egg's been solved now, and people have already started looking for what the next thing to do is going to be. I tweeted out earlier today saying, is there anything that you guys want to see? And some people said the usual sorts of things, like, oh, do a challenge on the map or something like that. But I kind of feel like at this point, those sorts of things have been done millions and millions of times on every single Zombies map that... I'm just not that enthusiastic about them right now. Other people were suggesting Fortnite because everyone is playing Fortnite right now. Everyone is enjoying Fortnite right now. And I'm not just talking about zombies YouTubers. I'm talking about people on the planet. Like so many of the kind of YouTube gaming viewers and streamers and community. So much of that community is playing Fortnite. And so it's no surprise, really, that so many YouTubers are jumping ship and going over to it, because that's where people want to see content. They don't want to see World War II Zombies, for the most part, they want to see that game. But I'm not planning to play Fortnite right now, just because I don't have the time for it, but that might change in the future, because it does look like a really fun game. I just haven't got the time with my degree and also the usual Zombies activities on my channel. But then I was thinking, okay, well, what do I want to do? What do I want to do with this mode? I've done a main quest Easter egg tutorial that's really in-depth. I've done the storyline quotes that are in the map that are all posted now on my channel. I've pack-a-punched the saw blade. I've got a couple other regular guys like pack-a-punch and power and all those sorts of things. So what do I want to do next? And I was thinking about it and I realized that World War II is really weird, in my opinion, because... The multiplayer, from my point of view, as someone who never plays multiplayer, seems to have some really cool systems in place. Now, let me just sort of zoom into this a little bit before I go on with what point I'm making, right? One of the systems that I really like in World War II multiplayer is orders, okay? So, you'll get a challenge from, I guess, I'm assuming the Quartermaster. I honestly don't know, I don't play the multiplayer enough. But, you get a challenge... And you can then activate the challenge, and then every time you get some progress with that challenge, it updates you in your game and says how far you are progressing towards a certain thing, and it's great. And at the end of it, you get a supply drop, or you get XP, or an unlock a camo, something like that, whatever it might be, okay? And it's not exactly a brand new idea by any means, but I really like the visual aesthetic of how it looks in World War II. The little medals look awesome. And they've got sort of that sort of thing in Zombies. The medals are there, but it's mainly for the hidden challenges, and so you really rarely see them, and you certainly don't get progress updates as to how close you are to doing certain things. And it's a shame the orders aren't in the game yet. It really is. And I know that there is now an orders tab in the game, so that's progress, I suppose. There's an orders tab in the Zombies menu, so they're probably coming in the future, but just having orders alone so that we can get more supply drops in the mode would be fantastic because, and this is going to bring me on to another point that I want to make here, it really feels in the mode like the best way to unlock things for zombies is to not actually play zombies and to just play multiplayer because you're not going to get a single zombies weapon variant pretty much from just playing zombies. You're much, much more likely to go into multiplayer, to do a bunch of orders, to unlock a bunch of stuff, to get a bunch of double XP or whatever it might be, zoom through some levels, unlock a bunch of supply drops, and then hope that you get a variant that happens to also have a zombies perk. You're not even guaranteed a zombies perk on every gun. It's only a couple of the guns, okay? You have to hope and pray that you get one, and then you can go into zombies and use it. Like, it's a really, really strange system. And it just feels frustrating, I guess. I mean, orders coming to zombies will obviously help with that. But even so, there's a bunch of variants that do nothing at all in the zombies mode other than change the look of the gun a little bit. And I get it. I mean, that's kind of fair enough, I suppose, if they want to do that a little bit. But today, for example, I was like, right, what I want to do is I'm going to play multiplayer until I get myself a heroic weapon or whatever the variants are called. I think they're called heroic. Basically... A variant of a gun and then I'll go into zombies and I'll see if it has any kind of zombies perk. I ended up doing a challenge to get like pistol kills or something in TDM or something like that, I don't really remember, and ended up getting really lucky and getting the heroic FG, which I was kind of hyped up about until I realized that it just doesn't do anything in zombies. There's no point in it being there. It looks slightly different to the regular FG, 
and it might as well just not be in the game for my purposes at least. I don't care about guns in MP, I only care about guns in zombies. And so that's one of those situations where I'm just like, gah, this is annoying, man. Like, if only there was a little bit more variation in the variant system in the zombies mode. But I guess that's something that hopefully they'll work on in the future, but at this point they probably won't because, like, those guns have shipped now, it's live, and there's no reason for them to really change the system, so... That's one thing that I have a little bit of a gripe about with the game. Another thing, right, is there's just no reason to prestige in zombies. There just isn't. Like, it's it's weird because in multiplayer, you're obviously expected to prestige all the damn time. I mean, that's sort of the way that multiplayer is always geared up. You might get a prestige unlock token. Great. Fantastic. But there's really just, in my opinion, so little incentive to prestige in World War II Zombies, and to be honest, Black Ops 3 kind of had this problem as well, and don't get me wrong guys, by the way, I'm not just sitting here hating on World War II for no reason, and I'm not saying that other CODs haven't had these issues either, these are just thoughts that have been popping into my head today as to how the game could be improved, because the devs in the last couple of days, like Cameron Dayton specifically on Twitter, He's been really receptive to feedback about the map. He's been receptive to glitches. He's commented on glitches. They've commented on glitches publicly on the Reddit. They've responded to other things on the Reddit as well. Like, they're really trying to engage, just like Lee Ross did last year. And so I figured that a video full of some constructive criticism might not go amiss. So I'm not hating here, okay? I just want to make that clear because a lot of people think that as soon as someone says something negative or as soon as someone disagrees, suddenly they're a troll or they're hating or they're being rude. That's just not the case, okay? I'm trying to give positive feedback here. There isn't a reason to prestige in zombies, or certainly there isn't one that I feel attracted to. And I think that I definitely play zombies probably less overall than the sort of average zombies player, simply because of the fact that I'm so busy with school, I kind of have to pick and choose when I'm able to play the mode. But it would be nice if there was just a reason to want to do it. I also feel like... You just hardly ever get any drops in this, uh, supply drops that is, just to clarify, zombie supply drops, you hardly get any of them in your games. Like, I've had multiple games where I've gone to like round 30 and got nothing, which feels a little bit frustrating, you know? Like, I feel like IW did a reasonable job of this, where at least you were always getting those keys kind of ticking up at the end of the game, and it felt like you were being rewarded, even if you didn't necessarily get enough keys to get you all the way th through to a crate, it still kind of had a feeling of, oh, okay, I earned 25 keys that game. Banging, that's awesome. Like, it was just a little bit of feedback to the player to say, you're earning stuff as it was spinning up and it would go, key, 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 key. Like, that was a good little thing in there just for player psychology alone to say, hey, player, drop the chips and get me some ammo. <laughs> no, to say, hey, player, your sort of game time is going towards something here. Because at the end of the day, Let's be realistic, as much as the supply drop system is disliked by many people, it's a successful system that generates Activision a lot of money, and it is quite satisfying to open a crate and get something that you want. Like, it does feel good, and obviously that's the point in it, that's the way that it's designed, and so it would be really a problem if it didn't feel good to open the damn things. It's nice to open them, and... So, to be opening them more rarely, simply because we're Zombies players rather than MP players, is just... I don't know, it just feels like the experience is diminished a little bit. Furthermore, one of the things that I think this map didn't really do that I was really praying it would do, is kind of give us a reason to care about the story. Because if you listen back to all the audio logs in the first map, you're left with this situation of basically kind of a whole mountain of exposition, and it's quite sloppy exposition in my opinion as well, because Klaus is talking to Marie, and he's literally like, Sister, I was so frustrated when I had to come and take over father's shop. Like, he wouldn't say, the shop. You're talking to your sister. Like, there's just things like that in the way that it's written, where they're clearly writing it to give us the player more information, and that I kind of acknowledge but it's done in such a way that it feels so ham-fisted when he's like, I was frustrated and I know our arguments grew annoying, that's fine. But then there are so many other things that come after that that's just like, you wouldn't say this to your sister. You wouldn't explain to your sister what your sister's just gonna know naturally from living with you or living, even just being alive at the same time as you and being your sibling. Like this, ah, oh. That writing frustrates me in those audio logs. But 
okay? But, 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 Straub is a great character, okay? So they do have that going for them. Udo Kier is an awesome actor for Straub as well. The drums of war. Like, that's great. But, right now, I personally feel like there isn't necessarily that little hook that pulls you in and makes you care about the mode. In the final note, in the darkest shore, not the final Reich, in the darkest shore, some of the audio talks about the kind of Meuchlers, or however you pronounce them, and just generally how they're being kept by Straub, and then they break free, and it's all chaotic and stuff, and there's Raven Crown, please help me, and all that jazz. So that's cool. That's a mystery that we have no way of solving right now. No real pieces to that puzzle, but it's something to sort of set up for the future and be interested in in DLC 2, DLC 3, DLC 4, whatever. Great. Fine. Okay? That's fantastic. But things like Nerthus, okay? Things like that. In the map, there's basically nothing giving me any reason to want to dig into the lore behind Nerthus. Basically nothing. There are two notes on the map that have been found so far. And when translated, they give you a little bit of information about the peculiar goings-on with Straub on the island. And they kind of seem to go towards the Nerthus Lord just a teeny little bit. Someone wandering the cliffs or something like that. It's a bit mysterious, but that is one little thread. And there really isn't anything attached to that thread. It's a bone with hardly any meat on it. And it kind of leaves me as a player, and as someone that freaking loves the zombie storyline, I mean, come on, you, you all know that, right? It leaves me kind of wishing that I had more things in the map to claw at myself in hopes of uncovering some deeper, darker secret, some deeper mystery. I mean, if you look at the way that the storyline has evolved over the years, okay, and I'm talking Treyarch now, back in World at War, there were mysteries set up that instantly started making us ask questions. And they were based in reality, just like World War II has tried to base a lot of what it's doing in reality, such as the bombing of Heligoland, for various reasons, as Cameron Dayton has recently commented on as well. One of those reasons could well have been this exact map's occurrences. Like, that's a completely plausible thing. Well, I mean, it's not completely plausible, but it's the sort of thing that, in your own little head, or big head, or whatever, if you Lex, you can cram that into your canon, and just accept it. You can give it a pass, and that can become something that you're sort of okay with as a semi-realistic thing that could have happened, right? And so that's how zombies started, and then it started getting really out of control with, like, Black Ops 2 being a blown-up Earth, and it was all a bit bombastic. And then Black Ops 3 had a bunch of mysteries as to where we're all going, and a greater evil than you lies here, and there were all sorts of things in that mode where we had the obvious story of the characters but then we had this underlying subtext of the house, right? Which is a mystery to this day. That's an unknown mystery. But there's a huge amount of information associated with the house. And there's been information associated with the house ever since it was first introduced. And then even more in The Giant, even more in Zetsubo, even more in Revelations, and then even more in Chronicles. So that's something that they've really built up massively. And it's a mystery that wasn't even the primary mystery of Black Ops 3. The primary mystery of Black Ops 3 was the kind of... Uh, fate of the world, of the universe, in the battle between Monty and the Shadow Man, I would argue. The premise cycle. And so, having this kind of subtext underneath the plot was really interesting. And in World War II, I just don't think that they've done enough so far to lay the foundations for that kind of satisfying payoff towards the end. For example, Drosten has been to the island before, but... He hardly talks about it. Why has that man been to the island? What was he doing? That's sort of the first question that comes to mind. And you get little tiny scraps of information here and there. But to have something more fleshed out, in my opinion, would have been really satisfying. There are other things in the mode that I think are also a tad annoying. For example, in Solo in the Darkest Shore, the doors cost the exact same amount of money as they do in co-op. Which means in co-op... You can start that lockdown sequence for the Easter Egg in 4-player on round 5 if you want to. Towards like the middle or end of round 5, you can for sure get into that step. 
on solo, you're much more likely to get in there around round 8. And if you get in there on round 8, the Meuchler can spawn, and you can have a Brenner, if you complete the step, and a Meuchler at the same time trying to kill you. That literally happened in my stream yesterday. I was streaming on Twitch, and... I was about to start killing the Brenner, and a Moikler spawned behind me and insta-downed me. It was ridiculous, and just the fact that that is actually possible, because of the fact that the game is not adjusted solo versus co-op, is just another one of those little things that would be so easily fixed, but would make the experience a lot more fun. Obviously, the fact that the Whistler is still glitched after, I mean, what, 48 hours since the map released, is not great. It's... A little confusing to me that they managed to get a hotfix out yesterday for another glitch that was later on in the easter egg, in the boss fight itself, I think at least. But they didn't manage to get this fix out yet. I mean, I understand if it's a harder problem to solve, but it really should be one of the things that they're prioritizing right now because it's a pretty big deal. Like, I've got a lot of people in my easter egg guide saying, I just can't do it. It gets stuck, and I don't know what to do. And that's completely fair enough, because that's not the way the game's meant to work. He's not going to just stand there and get stuck on a wall standing still. And a lot of the time, zombies don't even attack the dude, and so he doesn't die. Like, that really needs to be number one priority. And it's sort of just sitting there in limbo right now. One thing that is really good, though, is that Sledge actually bothered to comment on it on the day. Like, basically what happened, right, was uh, Cameron tweeted someone and said, yeah, as far as I'm aware, the map's fine. Like, it's uh, just sort of people getting the steps wrong that's causing them to not be able to do things. And I tweeted him one of my videos that specifically linked to that Whistler getting stuck on a perk. A couple hours later, Sledge posted on the Reddit, and Cameron also posted on Twitter, I believe, and he talked about it in an IGN stream about the fact that the step was glitched and that it was giving people issues with the easter egg. They acknowledged it there and then straight away, which was a really good start. They even went to the length of coming into my stream when we were trying to solve it and saying, yes, just to confirm, we've said that it's a glitch that is in the game right now and it's making the easter egg a lot harder to do and that step a lot harder for, to figure out, but it is actually beatable. It is possible. And just having that confirmation kept us powering through and then, I mean, we completed it and... Uh, it was really cool to see the cutscene for the first time, and that was great. So, that was something really positive that they did. I think that what they need to do now is to really keep people informed about an ETA on the Whistler Fix, for example, and just generally keep that kind of interaction really high in the community, because it's really valuable right now. It's also really cool to see that the character challenges that were leaked a while ago aren't actually all correct. A lot of the character challenges, as far as I'm aware, are still hidden, because... They changed the requirements for some of them, and so they're no longer the same as the stuff that got leaked out. And that means that they're currently a mystery because the game is now on PC. And this brings me to another thing that I want to talk about, right? Freaking A, Cameron and team and co, okay, the Sledgehammer Game Zombies team, please fix up when it comes to encrypting your strings in your hotfixes or patches for the PC version of this game. Please, for the love of all things holy, because I talked to, I believe his name is John Horsley, really, really nice guy, okay? Unbelievably nice guy. At the launch event for World War II Zombies, and one of the first things I said to him was, are you ready for people to be diving into the game files and leaking your stuff? And he said yes, or words to that effect at least, okay? I said, people will leak your cutscenes, and he said, don't worry, it'll be fine. I said, people will leak other stuff, basically anything they can get their hands on, and he essentially said that he was aware, the team was aware, and steps would be taken to prevent that sort of thing. But time and time again, I mean, the Darkest Shores Easter egg steps were online, apparently, according to a thing that Queen tweeted out the other day, from November 5th onwards? November 5th, we had the DLC 1 easter egg steps in November. Clearly there is a security issue there. And clearly that security issue is persisting seeing as uh, the intro and outro cutscenes for The Darkest Shore, I've just been told a couple of minutes ago, were leaked a week before the map came out. Clearly there is a problem. I got linked a Reddit thread and it was people saying like, 
Oh, this is uh, exactly as the leaks said it would be. That's a disappointment because I think people were talking about it because Sledge had commented on the Reddit and said, don't believe everything you see online. And people interpreted it to mean that the leaked cutscene info was wrong, whereas actually it was right. But the don't believe everything you see online thing was actually referring to the character challenges, I believe. So there was a bit of sort of miscommunication there, I suppose, on the community's part. But it's just so annoying that I am, I'm so against leaks for myself, okay? For, for me personally, I don't like looking at them. For other people, whatever. You do you, but don't shove it in other people's faces. Don't waggle it in their face, right? It's just not fair on them if they don't want to see spoilers. That's generally my kind of outlook. And the thing that's frustrating about the leak steps is that big YouTubers have got so much flack in the last couple of months for... Uh, for example, there was a group that did the Easter egg early on uh, the Final Reich. It was The game was out, but it was not out in all regions, and so people were really angry about that. And there's been a lot of flack surrounding that kind of topic. But there's certainly some blame to be shared by the devs for leaking their own steps early. When people are like, oh, big YouTubers just leaving and going to Fortnite. No commitment to zombies. What a lightweight. What do you expect when... People only want to watch Fortnite content, that's where all the views are, and this is our job, we've got to put food on the table, okay? But also, the community is purposefully diving into the code and grabbing all these leaked strings and all sorts and spoiling the steps before launch! Like, obviously, it's something that I'm, I'm quite kind of animated about because it's a problem that is a tricky one to figure out the best way to navigate, okay? It's not a black and white thing by any means, but... One thing is for certain, none of us, absolutely none of us, would be angry, okay, or at least I assume that none of us would be angry if Sledgehammer stepped up their in-game patching security such that they didn't spoil their own cutscenes in the future. I think that that would certainly be a valuable addition to their kind of arsenal of tools to keep the community hyped for the rest of the DLC season. I don't know how well Darkest Shore has sold. I don't know what the season pass attach rate is like on this game. I don't know. I have no idea. But I do know that World War II sold a huge number of copies. So a massive number of people have the base game and it's now the Zombies team's responsibility to get people buying that season pass so they get all the way through to DLC 4 and still care about the story and still care about the gameplay and still want to prestige and still want to get supply drops and variants and still enjoy the game. That's their responsibility right now, and that's only going to happen if there are some serious positive changes made in the next couple of weeks and months, in my opinion, okay? I think the variant system would be a really good thing. This also, I completely forgot about this, when I use a gun in Zombies, like let's say I use the Type 100 loads, I'd really like to unlock things for that gun because I'm using it so much. Why is that not in the game? Like, why? Right now... Everything you unlock is based on level, but it just doesn't make sense because if I'm never using the PPSH, I should have no anything for it. That should be locked or whatever. Like, like ugh, it just frustrates me so much that that's such a basic thing that could so easily be in the game and it's just not there. It's just not there. It would inspire just a sliver of variation in the gameplay. Oh, maybe I'm a completionist and I really want to unlock everything for every single gun, maybe the thing to do then is to go and use a gun that I've never used before, or actually buy a different wall gun to normal, or something like that. Like, it's such an easy thing to do, and it's not there. Okay, caveat. I don't know if it's an easy thing to do. I'm not a game developer, but it's such a simple concept, at least. It's such a simple idea that I'm just surprised they haven't executed, if that makes sense. And once again, I'm not hating here. I'm just animated and passionate because I want this game to succeed. And I really do think that the Sledgehammer Games Zombies team has the potential to do things that are really cool. A lot of this Easter egg was actually neat as hell. I like a lot of the steps in it, to be honest. A riddle in an Easter egg? Thank you for doing that. That's fantastic. But... If the underlying base gameplay isn't there to support it, does anyone care? Well, fewer people care than otherwise would. That's basically the point that I'm making, right? Oh, man.
I didn't expect to be talking for this long in this video. I just, <laughs> just been pouring it all out, man. Like, I also think that maybe looking at Whistler frequency would be a really good idea. I think that potentially the fact that it goes two hits to red screen and then another hit and you lose an armor, potentially that could be looked at. The freaking health regen time, oh my god, it's so slow. That really needs to be looked at, and I know that they've already said that they're looking at it. Cameron has actually tweeted me personally about that because I've asked him about it, but look at it faster, please, man, because it's it's bad right now. It's a chore to play the mode most of the time. Like, it feels like those EMZs are back in my face, just zapping me all the time, because no matter what happens, I'll be running around, and there'll be one pest behind me, and I'll be red. One pest. Like, it's just, it's just frustrating, and... Those sorts of changes are so small, but when they're in, I think that the overall mode will be really, really enjoyable. Also, okay, I'm gonna get to the end of the video now because I've been talking for like 25 minutes or half an hour, and my throat hurts. <laughs> I need some water. In fact, you know what? Perfect. The final thing I want to say is uh, one of the biggest gripes I have for Darkest Shore is that that map just looks grey. That's it. There isn't any color on that map, and I get it. It's a misty map. It's a foggy map. It's meant to be spooky, but I just dislike it because uh, you've got maps like Call of the Dead, which is a misty, foggy map. You've got maps like Origins, which has fog rolling in, but it's vibrant. Even Call of the Dead from 2011 is more vibrant on screen than this map. This map feels like it's so kind of desaturated and the contrast is so weird like it just doesn't feel nearly as crispy in terms of saturation as i love it to like i talked to john horsley about this actually at that launch event as well i said john the red screen in this mode is atrocious because it's this kind of jelly filter on your screen at all times that means that the gameplay looks terrible on youtube because it gets compressed it's red and it looks like trash okay and he said, yeah, that's something that we're actually really actively looking into at all times. That red screen is something that we've got a lot of focus on. But I think that they need to go a step further and look at the map design, for example, for Darkest Shore. Yes, it's okay to have a desaturated map. That's fine. But just making sure that things are still always clear is imperative. And in my opinion, I was watching a stream back the other day and then I was jumping into someone else's stream. I jumped into Smart Guy's stream and I jumped into, I think, Pizza's stream. And in both of their streams, even with Pizza's crazy saturation and Smart Guy's super nice stream quality, both of those streams looked grungy and weird because of the fact that the map just at base looks a bit strange in my opinion. Something wrong with the lighting or I don't even think it's the lighting, it's just the like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know because I'm not a dev, but it's something with the visual everything in the map that feels like there's just, just this screen over everything, kind of like in The Giant on PC. There's this kind of milky filter that I wish was just not there because everything would be a lot more crispy and lovely if it wasn't, okay? I'm going to wrap this up here because I've got to just stop talking at this point, seriously. Hopefully the devs take some of this on board. I've pretty much made this video for them because I really want them to understand that last year I was very critical of Infinite Warfare, but, and I cannot stress this enough because people don't understand it, I still really respected a lot of the things that they did in that mode. Like, looking back at Infinite Warfare now, there is a lot of positive stuff that I have to say about that game. Like, seriously, Lee Ross, if you're watching this for some weird reason and you're still in the video now, half an hour in, you really did do a good job, in my opinion, with the overall season for that game. There was a lot of stuff that I didn't like, whether it was the visuals, whether it was the gameplay designs, whether it was the story. Loads of things that I didn't like, for sure. But the effort was there, and the effort was significant and solid, okay? And I think that Sledgehammer are similarly piquing my interest, but there's just something about the story here being set in the past, and it's World War II, and it's all these things I love, the kind of occult involvement in the zombie storyline. That's what got me involved with zombies in the first place in World at War. And so it holds a little special place in my heart, man, and I want the mode to succeed. And I think that with a couple small changes, it really can grow into something cool, okay? So, I'm not a massive, massive fan of The Darkest Shore. I think that it's got a lot of room to grow as a map. 
I think that it's not as bad as I thought it was at the launch event, admittedly. At the review event for that map, I was very concerned, but coming through it now and having done the Easter egg, my opinion of it is significantly more positive, but it's still obviously nowhere near a map like Dorizendraha. Nowhere near. And for a DLC 1 that has to sell those season passes for the entire rest of the season, otherwise no one plays DLC 2, 3, and 4, I just feel like it's a shame that it wasn't slightly better. Missing a boss fight is really unfortunate because that's just ammunition for the people that just hate no matter what. Like, that's a really easy thing for them to be like, the map's trash, there's no boss fight. Like, we've had boss fights since the beginning of Black Ops 3, the map's trash. Like, that's just an easy thing to say at this point. And especially seeing as IW did bosses so well. Like, the IW bosses are fantastic. You cannot disagree with that. That alien pre-patch was so hard to kill, but it was so fun, in my opinion. The just general boss fights throughout. I mean, that boss fight in DLC 3 in Attack is fantastic. It's really good. And so overall, IW did it great. And in this game... On launch, boss fights in casual and hardcore that were basically the same thing, and uh, it was a mechanic that had already been used in the Easter egg, felt a little bit weak. And then in this, the boss fight is four rounds of killing zombies you've been running away from for the entire game because they're OP and they can insta-down you with this saw blade attack. It's just like, bruh. Nah, it could have been something more, and for DLC 1, could have been something more isn't quite good enough in my opinion. Anyway, I'm really rambling at this point. I want the mode to do well. I wish there was more hype for it on YouTube. I wish there was more demand for content. For all the viewers that say, why are people going to Fortnite? The reason for it is that zombies as a mode right now is just not hype for viewership. And YouTubers need viewership to survive. It's a basic fact. That's how the job works. That's how the industry works. You might not like it, but if you don't like it, you got to support the zombies content when it's there. Anyway, I really am rambling. I'm a Mr. Off Waffles. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hopefully the devs take some of this on board. Maybe they can respond with some constructive kind of dialogue if they feel so inclined. I'm absolutely open to talk at all times. I love zombies so much. I want the mode to be so good. If you want to talk, I'm down. But I'm Mr. Off Waffles. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.